Hi everyone, I'm Kimberly with My Victorian Heart, bringing you vintage inspired gifts and tools for creative joy. And you can find your creative joy at myvictorianheart.com. And today we are going to do a small project using the beautiful Iron Orchid Designs paint inlay, and it is the Paradise paint inlay. It is beautiful as all of their designs are. And this one has all my favorite colors flowers and birds they're so pretty so and here's the back cover of the paradise paint and lane it shows one of each of the eight pages you receive in your paint and lay and um, it has the instructions and how to use it and also when you buy a paint and lay from us I send you um, printed out instructions and FAQs that the IOD sisters put together to help people and they're wonderful. Let's show you what an actual sheet looks like before we get started. Here is a sheet that I want to show you. So I'm going to use these two birds and this is actually the back side of the paint inlay. So if you flip it around, this is the actual embedded artisan paint that will transfer onto your painted project. The artisan paint on this side, you put that face down on your wet paint or your wet medium. And I'm going to um, show you that when I do my project with you. But I'll just let you know um, when you um, apply your paint inlay, let's say you're going to use this block. And let's say this paint here is wet. So we're going to lay down our paradise inlay on the paint side down on the wet paint and we're going to smooth it out okay so you can and let's say this paint here is wet so we're going to lay down our paradise inlay on the paint side down on the wet paint and we're going to smooth it out okay so you can do that with like an iod silicone paint blade our, our roller brayer, IOD has a wonderful roller blayer that I like to use, brayer. And um, getting good contact between your paint inlay paint and your wet paint or your gel medium is key. Contact is key. I cannot stress that enough. You want to make sure you smooth it out and made really good contact. And then you let it sit. You need to let it, the paint dry. And if you, um, there's a rule the IOD sisters taught us. Um, if you have laid your paint and laid down on your painted surface and it feels cold to the touch, then it's still probably not dry, okay? And um, the other thing you wanna do after you lay down your paint and lay is after you've smoothed it, and made the good contact, you want to take a, um, a, a cloth that you have wet and you rub over your smoothed out paint inlay paper with the wet cloth. Or you can take a little mister sprayer and mist it and then rub it and just get that paper wet on the back, like not sack, like dripping wet, but wet enough because it helps activate the dry artisan paint in the pattern. And um, don't move your paper or pull your paper or shift it because once the um, paint becomes wet and in contact with other wet paint, it is um, activated and it's movable. So you don't wanna smear your design, okay? So that's two big points I would like for you to remember. And I just wanted to say another thing. Um, start small. Do a little IOD wood gallery blank or get a little plaque or small something. Um, do like a wooden ornament. Um, just there's so many things you could do. And in my video I did in January, I show you different small pieces that I did using paint inlays. And um, this is Rose Shintz. And there's cameos and frames molds on here. And there's a little snippet of a readout to text um, from a trans from the transfer readout to our so 
that's on there. And um, I am waiting for this to dry. So once this shade is nice and dry, we are gonna um, apply a coat of gel medium and our, our transfer. And I'll show you how, how that easy it is. So we'll be back shortly. Hi everyone, this is Kimberly with My Victorian Heart. And I am back to um, work with the IOD Paradise Paint Inlay on the wall sconce shade for our office here. And um, I just have a few things laid out to show you that you'll need when you work with the IOD Paint Inlays. Um, you need some water, some clean water. This is my old messy paint well. And um, you need some chalky based paint and you need um, some a spritzer bottle with water in it and um, I use this old recycle bottle that spritz out a nice fine mist and you'll need um, is what I like to use is a 50 50 water and sealer mixture and we use that when we do an initial sealing of the paint inlays after we have applied them to our project and then um, we also have a regular full strength sealer, and I this is uh, Amy Howard's matte sealer. I've used this really well with other paint inlays. And um, let's see, of course, some paint brushes. I also like to use the IOD paint blades to help smooth out our paint inlay paper when we're applying it to the project. Making good contact of your paint inlay design to your painted project is key to making sure you get a good design application. So let's get started. So I'm just gonna move some stuff out of the way. And you don't even need paint to apply a paint inlay. You can actually use a gel medium like this one. I have, I have used golden gel medium in matte um, on other paint inlays successfully. And I did a video on it back last January, almost a year ago, showing you little small projects that you could start with and you could you didn't even have to have paint. You could just use the gel and it works really well with the paint inlays. And this is the IOD Paradise paint inlay. It is truly beautiful. And when you buy a paint inlay from us at myvictorianheart.com, you will receive instructions, printed instructions that the IOD sisters put together that are super helpful. And also we'll give you a sample of another type of paint inlay. And if any of you haven't tried a paint inlay yet and you do place an order with us, or you could just email us and request a sample of a paint inlay. We would be happy to send you one. So let's get started. We're gonna put a fresh coat of paint on our shade so that we can apply our paint inlay. And you need a really good wet coat of um, your paint when you apply your inlay. And I um, skipped a step. I want to go ahead and cut out my patterns and decide where I want them around my shade. This is a round object, so it's a little bit trickier laying it out. And I discovered that um, it's better to like, I have these old pieces here, like I've used this once already. It's better to kind of cut and just arrange them on a round piece like this. It's so much easier than, you know, wrapping it. I did another shade where I was wrapping it. And as you can see, it ends up like this and it's a little more funky to work with. So I thought I would try it this way with you guys. But for this project, I'm gonna be putting a paint, lay, paint inlay inside here. And we're gonna take these birds that are at the bottom, we're gonna cut off this little selvage edge and we're just gonna put them in there like that and the little flowers will be up here like this. And then we'll do a contrasting paint color here. 
we'll trim it in some wax and some IOD mold and be really a pretty art piece to hang on the wall in my office. So that's what that's for. And we'll do that. Um, if I have time after we do this, I can do that. But if not, I'll do that in a separate video. And let's see. Let's get the scissors. So I know for sure that I want this pair of birds in the front center of my, my shade. And so we are gonna try to cut around. Oh, and here's the grid lines on this side. It makes it easy to cut along your pattern if you follow. And if you want a fussy cut like I'm gonna do, then you can just sort of work your way around like that. I wanna save these parts for this project here. And then these guys are gonna go on the front like this, perfectly. And then these pieces will go kind of on the top and you know, we have to work out how they're gonna fit. So now we just wanna cut around here. And when you're working with the paint and lays, don't forget, like I told you, on each edge of a paint and lay paper is a little, what they call selvage, like in sewing, like that, and you want to cut that blank edge off so you don't have like this weird blank outline trailing on the end of like a design somewhere on your project. You just want to snip those off. Sometimes I forget. And you know, the IOD paint inlays, they're really beautiful. They are made up of this really special artisan paint that is embedded onto the paper and you lay down the painted artisan paint side onto your wet paint to apply the design and it just renders this beautiful painted design that looks like it's hand painted. It's just such an amazing genius idea that the IOD sisters created. And if you haven't worked with a paint inlay yet, I would highly recommend trying a sample and do like a little project. You could do a small IOD wood gallery blank block or just some little plaque. All right, so let's see how these, and you wanna, when you put your, um, when you wanna see how your transfers look, make sure the brighter side, which is the paint painted design side, is facing down on your project, a dry project, so you can see how you want them laid out. So if you look, this branch is kind of cut off. So I don't want that up here. I want to put it down here on the edge. So it kind of trails off the edge. And then part of his tail feather is going to be off the edge, but that's okay. And then this guy, or you could turn it like this and not sacrifice any of the tail feather. There we go. Maybe a little tiny bit is getting sacrificed on there. Not a big deal. Okay, so that's how they're gonna look on there. And then we're gonna have these over here. And I think I'm gonna snip this stuff off here. A little weird edge of stuff. And over here, I'm, oopsie, I forgot to snip the selvage edge. Look at that. So we're just going to get rid of that all together. There we go. So now we want to get our paint ready. This is a, a FIFO bottle. I don't know if I'm saying that right. These are amazing. They really keep paint fresh for a long time. I'm just gonna use my mop brush 
This is a one inch mop brush by Princeton from Michaels. Love it, it's a great brush. Um, work quickly to get your inlay on fresh, wet paint. And you need to make sure you have enough, not too heavy, but not too thin, so that your inlay will adhere, or the design will apply properly. All right, I think that's good. So here we go. And I'm gonna put these here to sort of keep my shade from rocking sideways. All right, here we go. We're putting it on. We're going in. Oops, we need some more paint right here. Here we go. Okay, so another important thing to remember when you're applying a paint inlay is once you hit the design onto the wet paint, don't slide it or shift it because it could smear. Once the, the paint underneath on the paper, your um, artisan embedded paint, once it contacts wet paint or wet gel, it will activate the artisan paint and it becomes movable and smears. So you wanna make sure that you're mindful of that. And I like to take the IOD paint brayer which are fabulous. They're made of silicone and they feel good in your hand. And I like this size because I have kind of small hands. So it, it feels good in my hand and it it's comfortable. And I'm able to, did I get paint on the outside of that? I'm able to um, smooth out my inlay and make good contact. And another thing to use to smooth out inlays is an IOD roller brayer. Those are really helpful too. So, and don't rub too hard with your brayers. You don't want to tear your inlay paper. So you want to go in sections, like I said, like here, as you can see, there's not enough paint. And I need to add some paint. Move that over. See, the inlay is already trying to transfer onto that part. All right. Let's move that down. And my paper bubbled up a little bit right here next to this coral flower. And that's okay because there's no color there, but that told me that I didn't have enough paint on that part. So you might have that happen. You have to be really thorough. So we're going to smooth this down and make good contact of our paint inlay to our wet chalked Rust-Oleum paint. See another little bubble? Not enough paint there. Looks like we did good over here. So you want to let your paint inlay and your paint, like your paint, dry. And this can take anywhere from you know, 15 minutes, 20, 30 minutes to an hour, depending on the humidity and environmental conditions in the area that you're working in. Um, I live in humid Florida. We're having good cool weather with a bit of lower humidity. And um, so I'm hoping mine will dry faster than usual. And I have also taken a heat gun and gently holding on a distance dried mine, and that actually worked. And there's a video I did, a tutorial with a Roshan's paint inlay that I did with a Jane Austen kind of theme that I used the dryer in that video, I think, if I remember correctly. And that's those videos are on my YouTube and my Facebook page. All right, so there you go. So now we wanna lay this like this, and we wanna pick more of the design to go up here. So I think it needs some colorful flowers. So we're just gonna borrow from this piece. Oops, we're rolling around. Get back over there. Okay, let's see. I think we should just cut this cluster of pretty flowers above the birds. 
I think they'll be perfect up at the top. There we go. And I just sort of kind of fussy cut that excess paper off. And you don't have to. That's just me. I used to do a lot of die cutting, like the Victor with the Victorian images and stuff. So I think that's just why I do that. Okay. So I think this, and boy, I wish I could get rid of that paper right there. I could stick that down in there, you know? So we're gonna lose some of that right there. Darn. Oh, you know what I can do? I'm gonna cut that out. There we go. And it fits right over his little bird head perfectly. Trimming it as much as I can. Gonna have it in the paint. There we go. Look, his beak already transferred. <laughs> so. Just move it over a little bit. And we can fill in with other designs if we want to when we're done seeing where everything is after we pull them up and, you know. Okay. So let's get some paint on here in between these guys. There we go. Okay, now you gotta be careful because you've got your wet paint on here now and you wanna make sure you get it right. Okay, here we go. On there. I just wanna smooth out that extra paint. Okay, smooth it out. Make that contact. Let's go ahead and get some other patterns on here. Alrighty. I think this would be good right here, just like this. Kind of like a puzzle, see? That'll be pretty right there. Okay. So we're gonna lift this side up Add our paint. Oops, a paper on there. Here, I think there was already a little paint. Oh yeah, there was already some paint still there and they're already trying to transfer it without enough paint. <laughs> that just shows you how good this embedded paint by IOD is, you know? This stuff's amazing. I think this would be really good right here. Be 
careful not to get paint on top of your paper because you have to apply a misting and sponging of water to to dampen your paint inlay paper so that you can pull it up smoothly and easily when it is ready to come up. So you want to be mindful of that and I'll show you. We'll go over that together and you'll see what I'm talking about. Oops, there we go. Oops, what is that? Boy, I'm getting paint everywhere. <laughs> it's so messy. Just to know where your paint is, you can always just hold your paper in place. And then like when you're decoupaging, you do sections. So, you know, you just go like this. And then just find where we need the paint up here. And look at that, it's already trying to transfer. Stuff's amazing. You know, <laughs> miraculous to me. There you go. Gotta be really pretty. And we need to fill in a little teeny one here. So, how about this little delicate snippet? That might work there nicely. There we go. I think it'd be cute, kinda. A little drapey here. Okay. Oops, it's shifted. I think it's all right though. Okay. Almost done. Might be some spots to fill in at some point, but we're making progress. Alrighty. I think we could use another bird over here. Oh my goodness, he looks perfect right here. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, I wish his little buddy could be with him down here, but they won't fit. All right, let's do this.
See, he fits right there on the edge perfectly. So, just a little more fussy cutting on the curve of his little birdie neck. Okie doke. So, Probably seems like I'm really using a ton of paint, and I can't. I'm kind of using a lot of paint, but you want to make sure you have enough on there. Too thin, and it's not going to apply the the embedded paint very well. You need it to be, you know, good and wet to activate your paint inlay, so it goes on your project okay. Alrighty, Mr. Birdie's on there. We're gonna have to be creative on that part, for sure. You know, little pieces. So here's a pretty one with some teal blue. I love that color. So, oh yeah, that looks good right there like that. I'm trying to stay out of my paint. There we go. I think that's good. That's good. Let's see if we can find something else to put right here. I think I'll put this little flower right there. It's just a little snippet. We just need a teeny, teeny piece there. All right. That's what we're gonna do. 
can go in with paint. All right, I think we're good. So, we need to let this dry and then we'll come back and once your paint inlays have been applied and they're still wet and drying, you want to um, come back and take your water mister or a, a wet sponge or cloth and you dampen after you mist it, you go like this and you dampen it so it wets the paper. And then you um, take an edge and gently and slowly pull it up and see if your design is, is releasing, like if your paper is releasing easily and smoothly. So let's let this dry and we'll be right back. Hello, okay, I'm Kimberly with My Victorian Heart and I am back to um, show you how to remove your paint inlay paper after you have applied it to your wet paint. And we're just gonna um, take the water and mist the paper. And I tested a little spot to show you how the um, paint inlay design has transferred onto our paint. And um, shut my studio door. Okay, so you just want to do a light misting. And as you can see, when you wet your paper, your paint inlay paper, the color becomes more brilliant when you wet the paper. And you want to dab it. And my, my uh, linen cloth here, I dipped it in the, the water, clean water, and it's it's kind of a wet, damp cloth and I'm pressing on my paper. And you wanna wait, a, you know, a good 15 to 30 seconds, sometimes even a minute after you wet your paper before you start pulling it up. And you wanna test a corner by pulling it up to make sure it's ready to come up. Okay, so let's get some other parts wet here. I'm gonna tamp them down with a wet cloth. It's not like dripping wet, it's just, you know, damp. So, and you don't wanna like rub, you wanna pat and dab. Okay. All right, so let's see how this did. All right, so we're gonna go here. And when your paper pulls up easily without any resistance and it's smoothly pulling away, it is ready and okay to pull up your paint inlay paper. So this part didn't transfer well, and you know why? because I have paper in the way right here. I must not have had enough paint there. And so sometimes you can go back and reapply a dab of paint and put a little pattern there. But for this you know, tutorial, I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna pull up. And you know, some pieces transfer fully saturated. Sometimes, sometimes I do a transfer of a paint inlay and it goes on swimmingly. And I um, took my um, heat gun and tried to dry this instead of letting it sit and dry. And if you leave them overnight, sometimes that works better, you know?
I don't know why that one's not going. His little tail feathers aren't transferring. Don't know why. A little fussy there. I'm gonna leave that alone. So this is already drying. So we need to moisten it. I don't think I sprayed over here at all. And I got paint on that one. So. Where's my wet area? There it is. So. It's pulling up easily there. So like I said, you you need to wet it and probably wait a good 30 seconds to it. I think that needs more water there. And I think something else I forgot um, when we were applying all the sections of cut up paint and lay is I'm going on and dampening it and wetting it down and letting it sit. And then you do it again when you want to pull it up. That, that method has worked great. So, there we go. That's coming up nicely there. And his tail turned out really pretty. I'm so happy about that one. Awesome. Just gently and slowly pull your paper back. Don't, don't rush. So we want to pull this over. Okay. So you can lay out your piece that you just pulled up and lay it with the paint side up and lay it flat to let it dry, and you can use them a second time for another application on another project. And the um, the look will be a little bit less saturated color, and you can use them a third time. So we're gonna... Oh yeah, there's more tail feather going down. So that's working. So we're gonna leave it alone. <laughs> All right, so they're there, and I think I might trim this with something. I'm not sure yet. I was thinking about doing some IOD trimmings mold around the edge. I think that'd be really pretty. And then um, use a um, Pentart wax paste. And um, there's like a color in the wax paste that well, actually we have some green, we have some turquoise. We have some really pretty color wax paste by Pentart that I could put there. And we carry those waxes in the My Victorian Heart Shop too. So, all right, let's see. We did this next, so we're gonna, oh, and you know what, when you pull up these sections, you have to cover your parts that are exposed. You don't want to get them wet and smear them. So, you wanna cover those guys up. That's the only bad thing about having to piece them like this is you risk getting the exposed parts all wet. It's tricky business. And the other thing you can do is just dip your cloth in wet with your finger for more controlled application of your water. That's probably the safest way in this situation.
I'm gonna go ahead and spray here on this side, get it going before I remove any more. You wanna dab it quickly before it runs over to your exposed sections. So, who I think is that water on there? Okay, let that, don't wanna let that get smeared. Such pretty color. I love this one so much. And I can't wait to work with the um, other paint inlays. Um, the Le Chasse, which is like the French toile, is just, oh, I love that one. I cannot wait. That one's next. All right. Let's see. I don't know if I got that wet enough right there. Okay. Goodness, this is a lot of work. All right, here we go. Yes, awesome. Lay that little piece aside. Move this out of the way. Let's see how this did. And if you feel any bit of resistance when you're pulling, just lay the paper back down and blot it some more. Add a little more water. There you go. It's coming up. Beautiful. So something else I wanted to tell you about paint inlays. If you have like this little flower that didn't turn out so great. Um, you can go in with a small artist paintbrush and wet it a little bit. And then you wet the paint and you um, make it reactivated and movable and you can just sort of watercolor and spread some of the color paint around to make it filled in. And it actually looks really nice. Um, very, very hand painted look. So, plot this one a little, get this ready to come up. There we go. Get 
this little piece here. Ooh, I smeared that just now. <laughs> not to worry. Not a, it's really not even a big deal. So, do this little piece here. This one looks good, but it's tugging just a little bit. I don't want to pull it too hard, so I'm going to just dampen it some more when that happens. There you go. That didn't transfer so well. Oh, much better. <laughs> he has his tail feathers now. Okay. I think that's it. I think I got no, one more piece. There we go. Okay. Did we get it all? I think I did. Okay. Now I am going to spray my shade with some 50-50 um, mixture of 50% water and 50% or parts water and part Amy Howard matte sealer. So just going to get my old raggedy towel, put it here. Just a light misting of the sealer paint, you know. Make sure it's shaken really well. And then you just let this sit and dry. Don't touch it. You just let sit it aside and let it dry. And then you come back and do another coat of the 50-50 spray water sealer. And let that dry again. And I let it dry about an hour between each coat. And I have even come back and done a third misting of the 50-50 paint and water sealer. And then I come in and I hand brush on the full strength sealer. And it always does really well. It doesn't smear the paint and lay paint and it works great. So that's it. Thank you guys. Have a good night. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it.